Jamaica is looking at nuclear energy for electricity generation. Welcome to episode 112 of The Unequal Perspective. Hi, I'm Matt and I'm joined by Sarah and Rich is managing our soundboard. Okay, so today we're jumping right into a topic that, well, it always seems to stir up a lot of feelings, doesn't it? Nuclear power. Mm -hmm. Prime Minister Dr. Andrew Holness has been making a, a really public push lately for Jamaica to adopt nuclear energy. Mm -hmm. He sees it as this uh, transformative long-term fix for their energy problems. And specifically, they're eyeing those small modular nuclear reactors, the SMRs. Exactly, SMRs. Our goal here today really is to try and cut through some of that noise. You know, we're looking at what the technical people are saying, the ones driving this. Based on reporting from the Jamaica Information Service. Right. We want to examine the actual plan they've laid out because this isn't just about maybe lowering the light bill. It's framed as a uh, serious economic diversification, energy security for the whole country. Yeah, absolutely. And look, let's start where you pretty much have to start with atomic energy. And that's the public fear. It's okay. just inevitable. Oh. So before we even get technical, What's the immediate thing the experts are saying to reassure people? Because <laughs> you hear nuclear reactor and, well, your mind goes places, right? It does. And the committee seems very aware of that. They're tackling that fear head on. The, uh, the most crucial point, I think, comes from Professor Charles Grant. He's the director general of ISANS. ISANS, right? The International Center for Environmental and Nuclear Science. Yeah. And he chairs the committee looking into this. He was really emphatic. Jamaica will not adopt a first-of-a-kind reactor. Okay, hang on. That's actually a really important distinction. So they're saying, look, we're not going to be test subjects for some brand new, unproven tech. Precisely. No guinea pigs. Any reactor they even look at has to meet two really strict standards. One, it needs a proven track record, safe, secure operations somewhere else in the world. Okay. And two... It's got to be cost effective. Like it actually has to help lower the national energy bill. It can't just be safe. It has to make economic sense. Makes sense. And Professor Grant basically said, look, the nucleus packs immense energy. That's why you need strong laws and regulations hmm. to protect people, the environment, property, all of it. The power demands the rules. Yeah. OK, so if they're so focused on safety and security, I guess my assumption would be, OK, Jamaica's starting from square one here, like building up all the expertise, all the rules from scratch. Is that right? See, that's the really interesting part in these reports. The big surprise, maybe. Oh, Jamaica is actually something of a regional leader in using nuclear technology already. They are definitely not starting from a blank slate. Wait, really? A leader. How? I mean, when did that happen? You only ever hear about this stuff when it's about power plants. Well, the history goes way back, actually. Mid-1940s for diagnostic imaging and hospitals. Standard stuff, maybe. Okay, healthcare. But it's gotten much broader, much more critical lately. Think agriculture. They've been using nuclear tech successfully for years against major pests. Like what? We're talking fruit flies, mosquito infestations. They even managed to completely eradicate screw worms using this tech. That's huge for food security, for public health. They're winning these fights with nuclear science. Wow. OK, applying it to pests, that's uh, unexpected. But you mentioned critical uses. Right. And this is where it gets really interesting, especially for Jamaica, you know, always dealing with earthquakes, hurricanes. Like vulnerabilities are constant. Exactly. Professor Graham made this connection. As Jamaica builds bigger stuff, high rises, major highways, flyovers, they need to know those structures are sound after a big shake or a Cat 5 storm. Right. You can't afford collapses. Absolutely not. So how do you check a bridge after a hurricane without, you know, tearing it apart? Good question. How? Non-destructive testing. Using nuclear technology, you can literally think of it like giving your building an x-ray. An x-ray for a skyscraper. Basically, yeah. Instead of drilling holes to check the rebar or looking for hidden rust or cracks inside the concrete, this tech lets them see the structural integrity without damaging anything. That's incredible. And the reports say this tech is either already on the island or on its way. It's becoming a basic safety need for their infrastructure. OK, that completely shifts the perspective, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We're not talking about some far off scary idea. Mm -hmm. This is tech they're already using to keep people safe. Exactly. Which I guess leads us right to the regulations. If they're X-raying buildings, the legal side must be more developed than I thought. It is surprisingly advanced. Dr. Cliff Riley, he's the Director General of the Hazardous Substances Regulatory Authority, the HSR Authority. He pointed this out. Okay. The foundation exists. They have the Nuclear Safety and Radiation Protection Act from 2015. 
and supporting regulations from 2019. 2015, wow. And what really jumped out at me from the reports was how far ahead Jamaica seems to be in the region. Mm -hmm. Dr. Riley said Jamaica is the only English-speaking country with both a research reactor and a gamma radiator used for research. Yeah, that's not trivial. That's established leadership in nuclear science right there in the Caribbean. Serious stuff. And they know they need to keep going. The framework's still evolving. They're working on getting nuclear security regulations passed, hopefully, by 2026. So the tech advances, the rules need to keep up. And that obviously means you need the people, more technical expertise. Yeah. But not just engineers, right? You need legal minds, too. People who get the international treaties, the domestic law. Which brings in the IAEA the International Atomic Energy Agency. Exactly. They actually recognized the UWI Faculty of Law, the Mona Law School, specifically as a nuclear law training site. Not just for Jamaica, for the whole Caribbean region. Wow, just that one fact tells you a lot about Jamaica's role and how fast this whole field is growing across the islands. Absolutely. And if you zoom out, the bigger regional picture is clear. It's about boosting energy security, boosting food security. Dr. Riley put it very bluntly, something like, ugh. Gone are the days when we can be fully dependent on other member states. That's the one. The region needs its own experts, its own path. And charting that path, well, it leads right back to those SMRs, doesn't it? Yeah. According to experts like Dr. Peter Glegg, he's a nuclear law lecturer at Mona. Right. He called SMRs a very good solution, specifically for high electricity costs. Mm -hmm. And we all know how crippling high energy costs can be especially for a developing economy. Oh, absolutely. It hits everything. The cost of living goes up for everyone. And crucially, it makes the country less competitive internationally. SMRs are seen as one way to try and stabilize that. But the cost to build these things must be enormous. Huge initial investment, no doubt. But interestingly, a major hurdle was recently cleared. The World Bank apparently removed its restrictions on funding nuclear energy projects. Oh, really? Yeah. Big. That opens up new ways to actually finance these massive projects. Definitely changes the landscape. And beyond the money, let's circle back to security. Mm. So the tech's feasible, the economics might work, the expertise is growing, but the law says stop. That's the bottleneck. The primary legislative bottleneck, yes. Which naturally brings us to the other huge mountain to climb, the cultural one. Even now, if they I've... change the law tomorrow, if the public is still terrified, it's a non-starter, right? Absolutely. The experts know this. Public trust is everything. They're calling for one massive public education campaign. To explain the benefits, the safety. Right. But not just inform. It needs to really change those deep-seated fears and perceptions about nuclear energy. And there was that really powerful quote about the goal of this campaign. Yeah. What was it? To emancipate ourselves from mental slavery, have no fear for atomic energy. Yeah, pretty strong language. It really frames the fear as something uh, maybe irrational, a holdover from the past, especially given the safety measures and regulations they believe they can implement. Not just healthy skepticism, but something more ingrained. So wrapping this up, mm -hmm. what does it all mean for you listening? We see Jamaica at this potential turning point for its energy future. SMRs are on the table to tackle living costs and boost energy security. Mm -hmm. But the core tension is this. They have a solid foundation, the science, the research reactor, even the regional law training. Yet, to actually get those economic and security benefits from power generation, they need two massive things to happen. One, huge public acceptance and buy-in. Mm -hmm. And two, a fundamental change in their own laws to actually allow commercial nuclear power. It's like preparedness hitting a legal wall. And this whole conversation, it's not really about some brand new alien technology. It's about taking tech they already use. Tech used for vital stuff like checking buildings after hurricanes, protecting crops. Right. And expanding its application to the energy sector. Basically, consolidating the expertise they already have for, well, future security. It's a fascinating spot to be in. It really is. So here's something to think about. Considering Jamaica already uses nuclear tech to x-ray its high-rises and save its agriculture, what's the single biggest challenge left for this SMR push? Mm. Is it actually changing the law? Or is it fundamentally shifting how the public sees atomic energy? Something to mull over. Thanks for joining us for this analysis. Yeah.